What is up guys, welcome back. My name is Charles, owner of MX Revival and MXRevival.com. And today we have some really cool parts to install on T1000. We're gonna cover everything from my favorite indestructible throttle tube all the way down to how to update your front end the proper way. Yes, there's a proper way to do it. I'm also gonna show you a killer way to get rid of those ugly yellowed brake line guides on your Honda and how you can actually personalize your bike a little bit in the process. And we're gonna round this video out with a little trick. We're gonna go ahead and strip the anodizing out of these brand new foot pegs. They're a really good looking gunmetal gray but you guys already know I need them to be liquid metal silver to match the T1000 build. Now if you missed last week's video where we bolted on our insanely trick suspension from Ride JBI, what I'm using to bolt the bike back together, and of course the full review of the Phoenix handlebars, I will be sure to leave a link for you below so you can get caught up. And guys I am getting dangerously close to finishing up T1000. I am super pumped to finish this bike, bring it back down to Southern California, and get the look on the faces of the Dirt Bike Magazine crew for the very first time. It's a far cry from where we started. This bike was an absolute pile of shit to be perfectly honest. So we should have a reveal video and some photos in the next three to four weeks and that is very exciting. So let's get this video started and into this super trick throttle tube from Zero Resistance Throttle. My buddy Tom was kind enough to send over one of his throttle tubes. Tom, thank you for all the support over the years. Now these throttle tubes are precision CNC cut in the USA and what is particularly awesome about them is the roller bearing system that is on each end of the throttle tube. What this effectively does is keeps the actual throttle tube from ever touching the handlebar itself like most traditional throttle tubes do. Hence the name Zero Resistance Throttle. And guys, I kid you not, there is zero drag on the bar whatsoever. I've been using this throttle tube on my RMZ450 for a couple of years and the action of the throttle tube is just butter. It has withstood every single one of my crashes and it feels just as good as the first day I installed it. But speaking of install, the install is a little more involved than a regular throttle tube. We actually have to cut the bar end off of our Phoenix handlebars in order to run this throttle. Now the reason we're cutting the end of the handlebar off is in order to install ZRT's bearing insert that goes into the end of the throttle tube so the room it actually takes up is the amount of room we actually need to remove from the handlebar end. Another great feature about the ZRT throttle is that it doesn't matter if you're an MX rider or a woods guy. For example, if you're running bark busters or hand guards that wrap all the way around, and tie into the end of your handlebar, you would just use a different and also included insert that the ZRT comes with to run your bark busters like normal. You guys can use a hacksaw for this install, but I like to use a mini porta band. It is about a thousand times faster than using a hacksaw. So guys, as you can see, we have a pretty badass, pretty gnarly throttle on our hands. I mean, can your stock throttle tube do this? I didn't think so. If you guys want to watch a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to install this, I've already filmed that for you. You can check that video out right here. It'll also be in the description for you. And Tom, thanks again. I love the parts you're manufacturing. Thank you very much for being a part of the build. And for the rest of you boys and girls out there, you need one of these. Guys, no joke, that is the best throttle tube that I have ever, ever used. If you want to learn more about it, go ahead and check it out on mxrevival.com. And for now, it's time to update this ratty old front end. Well, it's not so ratty anymore because we've been doing a lot of freaking vapor blasting, but I think you get what I mean. It's time to do some serious front end updating with a very special part from a very special dude. If you guys are somehow subscribed to my channel, but not to Cameron's channel, I would be utterly shocked. But just in case, Cameron Nimala. Cam, hopefully I'm not butchering your last name. Did I get it right? Cameron is the man behind the brand Prime. MX, P-R-Y-M-E, and thanks to Prime, they've come up with a great way to update the front end of your bike the proper way. No drilling holes, no ratty brackets, no zip ties. So this is a Prime MX front number plate and front fender adapter kit. The product itself is finished beautifully. It includes every piece of hardware you need to install the part right the first time, and everything you need to bolt on your updated front number plate and front fender. In our case, T-1000 is a 2003 CR250, which has the hole front and center on the triple clamps to mount the old number plate. However, the 2020 front number plate we'll be using has two mounting holes, one on the far left, one on the far right, and they're both on the top. Not only does this upgrade pay huge dividends in the style department, but they're only about $30, including shipping. Install is simple. Bolt the bracket on, use the supplied hardware, install your front number plate, crack a cold one, turn around, admire your brand new front end, and if you're really badass, you'll go ahead and go review the product on PrimeMX.com. Another great feature in this kit is it actually even includes a template that you lay onto the top of your 2020 front fender, and it gives you a guide as to where to drill your new bolt holes, since your old triple clamps don't have the bolt holes in the proper location to hold the 2020 front fender. I'll have to show you guys how to use the front fender template later because I'm still waiting on our front fender from Artec. And speaking of Artec, they have been an incredible sponsor of mine for the past couple years. We've been importing these special plastics from Italy, a lot of YZ Revolution kits as a matter of fact, and they've gone way out of their way to hook us up with CR250 parts for this build. In fact, they sent me so many different body panels in different colors for the CR250 that I promised them when I'm done, whatever's left over, 
I'm gonna go ahead and get all those plastics out to somebody with a CR that really needs them. So stay tuned for that. We'll figure out a great way to get them to one of you guys. In the meantime, you guys can check out the full Artec plastic catalog on the MX Revival website. Just look under plastics and graphics and you'll find the link. And Cameron, that's three for three, bro. We've now used three of your front number plate brackets, some on CRF 450s, now on the CR 252 stroke. Perfect fit every time. You make an amazing product. So guys, I just opened Cameron's kit and there's actually even more accessories in there than the last time I used it. There is a really badass aluminum plate front fender adapter. I don't remember that coming in the CRF kit. So Cameron has actually upgraded these. In addition to that, there's even a couple of long clear stickers and those long clear stickers actually go around your fork tubes in the event that you're using a Sycra stadium plate. The Sycra stadium plate bolts on up top in the front of your bike and then down low it's actually held on by zip ties and over time those plates do actually mar the aluminum and dig into your fork tubes so Cameron that is a brilliant addition to the kit really stoked to see it in there great job dude all right guys now we're not done updating the CR in the looks department another really great way to do this both front and rear and add a little bit of personalization at the exact same time is in this next package I've waited to open this sucker up until I could do it with you. So let's tear into this bad boy. All right, guys, next up, this is a really cool product from a buddy of mine, Josh, at a company called 3DP Moto in California. They are a 3D printing company with heavy emphasis on the moto community. And I haven't seen this yet, so I'm really excited. I know what it is, but like I said, I wanna see it. I cut his sticker in half. Sorry, bud, looks like we can still use it. <laughs> oh boy, what do we have? Ah, oh, yes. Now guys, you may be familiar with the stock brake line guides on your Honda, the original white ones, the ones that turn yellow, the ones that break. We now have a beautiful black option for the CRs. This is a 3D printed rear brake line guide and I'm gonna slap this on the swing arm with you guys here today. We needed this so bad and there was no way I was using the white one. Up next, oh, that is so cool. Josh, man, you killed these. Guys, this is the front brake line guide, and there's something even more special about it. As you guys know, this dirt bike build is called T1000, and so does 3DP. Check that out. We got the T1000 logo right there in the front of the brake line guide. This will be on the front of the bike. Josh even sends a little crush sleeve that goes inside the guide here. That way you don't crush the plastic when you bolt it onto your front end. If you guys want one of these suckers, you gotta check out 3DP. You can put your name in it, your race number, whatever you like. I do have a little disclaimer for you guys about the brake line guides. As you've seen, ours came in a really nice gloss black. The difference between our T1000 guides and the ones you're gonna be able to buy from the 3DP website is that the ones you purchase will be in a matte black. Reason being, Josh pulled out all the stops put an extra special chemical finish on these to make them gloss and as such they actually become brittle so these guides are more for the special magazine projects and the ones you guys will receive are in a matte black but they are far more flexible and they have a much longer lifespan josh you killed it on these brake line guides thank you for making them extra special with the gloss we really appreciate that it's just one more thing on t1000 that is perfect all right guys we are getting down on the last line item on today's video i need to go ahead and strip the anodizing out of these really cool gunmetal colored pegs. We're gonna go ahead and get the lie bath ready. We're gonna get everything we need out. And to be quite honest, this is a total experiment. There is a reason I chose these pegs. They are not very expensive, although they are pretty wide and I really like the way they feel. I also like that they do have removable and replaceable teeth. So that's really great. But if I had spent $200 on a set of pegs, I probably wouldn't be as apt to try this. So let's see how it goes. Part one, we're gonna go ahead and get these in the lie bath. Loosen up that anodizing. Hopefully everything goes according to plan. And I'm really anxious to see what happens to the laser etched Tusk logo because I would like to get rid of it. All right, I guess today I'm not only a bike builder, but I'm also a dentist because I need to remove all of these teeth from this foot peg before I throw them in. They're probably steel. We don't want these in there. We don't want to damage them. And I actually think it's pretty rad that these foot pegs can actually have the teeth replaced when they wear out. Now, in order to get the teeth out of this thing, I actually had to go ahead and buy the replacement tooth kit, which ain't a bad deal. I think there were just a couple of dollars so like I said, really cool that you can replace the teeth in here. And once you have the tool, you're pretty much set. So that's all I really needed. Looks like these also have a little bit of Loctite on them from the factory, which is great, but also means I had my work cut out for me. I should just hook something up to a drill and spin these bastards out. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be here for a small eternity. Oh man, these things are like a torque spit with threads on the bottom. I guess now I know how KTM riders feel. All right, we're down to the last little peg tooth. A lonely little guy. What's up with that? What's that thing doing in there all by itself? About as useless as tits on a deer. Ah, but in all honesty, that actually took about seven minutes. 
So now that we have everything we need, we've got our bucket, we've got our lye. This is the one pound bottle, just to make sure you guys don't buy the 10 pound bottle on accident in case there is such a thing. I got this right off of Amazon. We have our part we want to strip anodizing out of. It could be a foot pig, it could be something else, maybe a set of triple clamps that are a little beat up that you'd like to refinish, but you have to get the anodizing out of them first. We've got some rubber gloves. You do not want to get this stuff on your skin. Maybe you guys remember a couple of years ago when there was some heavy rains in some of the Supercross and the track guys, they just dumped more and more and more lye into the track to try and dry up all the water and all the mud so the supercross riders can ride on a track that's not a swamp well maybe you also remember that the lie absolutely destroyed all the aluminum all the engines all the factory parts it gave a lot of the riders really severe burns on their skin as well out there riding in it getting rubbed into their skin they're sweating the whole shebang last up i have a little measuring cup we're going to go ahead and just start with a quarter cup at a time this is a complete experiment I don't actually know how much to use yet, although I have done two full swing arms before and this trick worked amazing to get the clear anodizing off. Yes, if you didn't know that, your swing arm is clear anodized from the factory and all of the modern bikes are. Huge shout out to my buddy David Allen who is ThrowbackMX on Instagram. You guys probably know him. If you don't, go ahead and check out his handle. He's a great guy restoring a lot of late 90s and earlier motocross bikes. And some of the parts he has on his machines are like unobtainium. You can't get them. There's like one of one out there in the universe. And he's such a badass dude that all these parts always seem to find him. He deserves it. Love the guy. Throwback, thank you for this tip. It was most helpful. Now without further ado, let's get the anodizing off these goddamn foot pegs. All right, here goes nothing. I did get some hot water from inside the house. It's recommended this water be warm. Got the old bottle of lye, about a quarter cup. Give it a little stir. And hopefully next time we see this peg, the anodizing is gonna fall right off of it. Oh yeah, it's working. You guys can see the bubbles coming off this thing. Guys, I can hear it working. Oh yeah, she's still bubbling. Let's check this out. Definitely coming off. Starting to turn silver. Needs a little more time. It's been about 20 minutes in the lye bath. The thing is bubbling and steaming and smoking and doing all kinds of cool chemical reaction type stuff. I got a little too close to the bucket and actually breathed in a little bit of that off gassing. Not good, it burns your throat. So guys, if you're doing this, stay away from the bucket. I'm being really impatient because I want to get that thing out and show it to you guys, but that's not good to breathe. So be really careful. And as you can see, it's starting to strip. So next step, a little bit more stripping. We'll get it in the vapor blaster. Now, every time I let it sit, it sort of looks anodized again, but if you give it a nice rub, the anodizing is coming off. So what that tells me is it's at that point now where it's pretty much liquefied and I can actually vapor blast this off now. All right, guys, it's time to get the pegs into the vapor blaster. As you can see, one of them is very badly burnt from the lye bath. And I actually already filmed an alternate ending to this video where I don't actually show you the vapor blasting part. I was gonna make you guys wait until next Saturday, but I just couldn't commit. I thought that was kind of a dick move. So let's go ahead, get these parts in the vapor blaster or one of these parts in the vapor blaster. And I'm really pumped because I thought we were gonna have to wait until we got into the vapor blaster to get rid of the Tusk logo, but it's already gone. So I don't know if that means it's not actually a laser edge, but if it is, it's super light. Time to blast. How we do. Oh yeah. That came out perfect. That's exactly what we were going for. Beautiful. That my friends is T1000 liquid metal. Although she is looking a little country with all those missing teeth. All right guys, so we covered a lot of ground in today's video. I hope you learned something. I hope you found it entertaining. If you did, please do not forget to decimate that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. You guys know how much it means to me to have you hang out with me here on YouTube. I appreciate every one of you. To my guys that help with the build, Cameron, Josh, Tom, Cameron, Josh, Tom. To my build team, the guys who always help me out, Cameron, Josh, Tom, guys, thank you so much for being a part of what I do. Now coming up in the next episode of the T1000 build, guys, 
I have the nastiest wheel set built for T1000. I think they're gonna blow your mind. Not only that, but I have a little bit of zinc plating to do with you guys. Some bolts, like the swing arm main pin, you can't buy them anymore, you can't get them new. So when they're totally messed up like the one in T1000 was, you don't really have a choice you can get on eBay, but then you're gonna end up with another messed up bolt. I already had one of those. So sometimes we have to bust out the zinc plating kit. I'm gonna show you guys how I do that when I need to. And honestly, it's really fun to do. So I hope you enjoy that as well next week. If you need to get caught up on the CR250, T1000 build or the CR500 build for Dirt Bike Magazine, I'll go ahead and leave a video and a playlist right here for you guys. Go ahead and check those out when you have time. Get caught up on the builds. And as always, guys, I appreciate you. Keep it pinned, and I will see you very soon. Yeah!